Hi, and a very good evening and a warm welcome to our daily session of current affairs. I hope all of your preparation is going in full. You all are preparing in full force for RBI Grade B examination. You can check out our crash course for RBI Grade B exam, right? We discuss about it at length before also in our videos. Uh, we will give you personalized guidance, right? You still have time. You still have time to, you know, correct if you're going, uh, you, you know, you're doing something wrong in your preparation. Or even if you want a one-to-one -one talk, you can, you know, you can, you want your queries to be resolved. You can post your query in our discussion forum that is there on our website. Okay, so do check that out. Also, you will get the PPT, you will get the PDF of this uh, current affairs session in our Telegram group. So, do join our Telegram channel, the link of which is given down in the description below. Okay, so let's start with the very first question of today. Let's start with the very first question of today as to which edition of Raisana Hill Dialogue was organized recently. So, you will know about this, Raisana Dialogue uh, ka ye the correct answer is basically 7th edition. The 7th edition of uh, this dialogue is being held uh, recently. Right, Raisana dialogue is being conducted since the year 2016. Right, 2016 se ye Raisana Hill dialogue conduct karwaya ja hai. Raisana derives the name from the seat of the government of India which is your uh, Raisana Hill. Right. So let's just discuss a few things about it. Seventh edition hai ye dialogue ka, right? Or ye multilateral foreign policy and geoeconomic conference ho ka Delhi mein. The European Commission, uh, recently the President of European Commission, the President of European Commission, who Ursula von der Leyen. Ursula von der Leyen was the chief guest of this dialogue. So Ursula von der Leyen, ye dialogue ki chief guest hai. And not only New Delhi, but the dialogue, the main event of the dialogue will be held in New Delhi, but also subsequent event will also be conducted at other places. We'll discuss about it, but first let's just see, it is, uh, the dialogue is being, con uh, you know, organized since the year 2016 by the Ministry of External Affairs in collaboration with Observer Research Foundation. Okay, so the dialogue is being Se conduct karwaya ja in collaboration with Observer Research Foundation, which is a very important public policy think tank, hai, right? Think tanks, that is a non-profit organization, usually are categorized, uh, uh, ka, jo think tanks, hote hai, they come under the category of non-profit organization. The Observer Research Foundation, hai, which is the think tank, and the chair of Observer Research Foundation, the chairperson of Observer Research Foundation is Mr. Sunjay Joshi. Okay. So she is the she is the president. She is the president of uh, European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen. Ursula, you can remember the opposite of Phoebe. Naam to yaad ho jayega agar MCQ mein aa gaya, just in case. You know, these are called mnemonics. You relate, you relate to things that you study in your preparation with the practical things that you come across in a day-to-day -day life. It helps you remember some facts better. Okay, so she was the chief guest of the event, right? You must have, you must have heard, you must have read it in the news also today uh, about her comments, about her comments on uh, Russia and China's friendship. That... A month before you, uh, Russian invasion over Ukraine, China declared that Russia and China friend, uh, Russian and Chinese friendship are indestructible, right? So she was in news today regarding that statement, regarding that statement and what will be its implications for India. It's a food for thought to you guys, right? So these, uh, the main theme, the main theme of uh, Raisana Hill Dialogue 2022 is Terra Nova. Terra Nova ka matlab kya hota? New territory. Right? Terra Nova, you must have played some game, video game. Right? Earlier before, it was named as Terra Nova. Terra Nova means new territory. Why is the theme new territory? Why? Because the world that we are in today, 
इट इज अ पोस्ट पैंडेमिक वर्ल्ड और कोविड नाइनटीन का जो पैंडेमिक है इट इज इक्वली अफेक्टेड ऑल द कंट्रीज इट हैज बीन अ ग्रेट लेवर लेवलर Why? Because US को भी उतना ही इम्पैक्ट किया जितना इंडिया जितना रशिया जितना चाइना राइट सो बेसिकली कोविड नाइनटीन के बाद का जो फेज है द इकोनॉमिक क्राइसिस विद विच ऑल द कंट्रीज आर स्ट्रगलिंग विद सो दिस इज एक्चुअली अ न्यू टेरिटरी एंड दैट इज वाई इट इज नेम्ड एज टेरोनोवा इम्पैशंट वाई इम्पैशंट इम्पैशंट बेसिकली बिकॉज इट इज अ वर्ल्ड हॉन्टेड बाई अनसर्टेनिटी it is a world haunted by uncertainty uncertain fear of the future a future that is in peril why because of the pandemic uh, pandemic induced crisis that is why it, the impatient word is used here and similarly impatient and imperiled ka bhi same implication on a broader level and terra nova the theme for 2022 it basically means new territory that is new territory that the world is in today after the covid-19 pandemic rethinking democracy end of multilateralism matlab ye iske six pillars hain these are six pillars of the major themes six pillars means in sare themes pe is uh, raizana dialogue pe discussion hoga it is one common platform it is miss in the words in the exact words of minister of external affairs uh mr jay shankar that the raisana hill dialogue is a platform where all the friends and partners of india they come together on one platform to discuss issues they have a common ground with right so the common issues that uh, will be discussed in the raisana hill dialogue will be rethinking democracy rethinking democracy end of multilateralism end of multi- you all know you all know that the world today is moving away from multilateralism bilateralism has been increasing chahe aap india ki economy ko hi dekh lijiye so many bilateral trade and investments agreement are being signed right many countries are coming up together in bilateral partnership the significance of wto which is supposed to be a multilateral organization global organizations like the significance of who the united nations they all are eroding the rule the rule of international order today is bilateralism and that is why end of multilateralism is a key issue in this dialogue a network is it a network global order okay water caucuses means turbulent tides in the indo pacific region so its ka implication kya hai it is not about pollution right water caucuses here implies maritime security you all know about quad security dialogue right so quad security dialogue se implication hota hai water caucuses means indo pacific region mein ek international rules based order to uh, help uh, nations maintain their sovereignty to respect the sovereign boundaries that is the implication of water caucuses here communities incorporated that is first responders to health development and planet again related to covid 19 the covid warriors achieving green transition means transition transitioning from carbon uh, emission to net zero technologies in major sector and samson versus goliath the persistence and relentless tech wars that is your fourth related to your fourth industrial revolution so these are some very very interesting topics these are some very very interesting topics and the theme of 2022 raisana hill dialogue <clears throat> do read more about it whenever you have the time it will build up on your insight and uh, no, you will have your own it is good to have your own perspective on these some more important issues okay so isse pehle isse pehle raizana hill dialogue ke kya kya themes reh chuke hain why i am sharing you this list this list of theme why because bahut zyada time nahi hua hai 2016 se hi start hua hai to isko ek bar read karne mein there is no loss number 2 number 2 in your exam in your exam if it asks you the 2022 theme for raisana hill dialogue and just suppose you do not remember terra nova of course you will because the name is very catchy but suppose koi aur koi aur conference ka theme agar puch liya 
right and suppose you get one of these options it will be easy for you to eliminate when you bring everything into one perspective right when you study about things more as a fact and points agar aap zyada padhte ho to it becomes elimination becomes easier right re rizana hill dialogue ki jagah kisi aur conference ki theme mein bhi aise galat options ko use kiya ja sakta hai so it is always remember just one read and you will remember right asia regional global connectivity this was the very first rizana hill dialogue right and 2017 18 19 all these themes were there okay so just have a look at it moving on to the next question where was the venue of mega event yog prabha 2022 organized by the ministry of civil aviation ministry of civil aviation mr jyotiraditya sindhya has also attended the event the mega event yog prabha 2022 so you all know you all know that the international yoga day which is celebrated every year on 21st of june has entered its eighth year okay so eighth year mein ye hai to so there is a program there is a program 100 days till 2021 till uh, sorry 100 days till june 21 100 days till june 21 the ministries will organize yoga sessions it will encourage people it will build up a habit of daily yoga practice among people for you know a span of these 100 days to usi ke line mein usi ke line mein chalte hue yog prabha event organize kiya hai ministry of civil aviation ne now it is asking you at which airport at which airport is the mission being uh, or the event being organized by it let's have a look at the answer let's have a look at the answer at safdarjang airport safdarjang airport new delhi mein ye organization Uh, you know conduct ये event conduct करवाया गया है from मोरारजी देसाई institute of yoga guided the participants in performing various yoga asan and pranayam techniques okay so मोरारजी देसाई institute of yoga एक autonomous organization है it is an autonomous organization it comes under the ministry of आयुष okay it comes under the ministry of आयुष and it is the nodal agency for promoting you know training and promotion of yoga uska ye nodal agency hai ye iska motto hai samvatam yoga uchchate which means health harmony and happiness for all through yoga samvatam yoga uchchate okay so you have another question which nation has organized asia's biggest international फूड एंड हॉस्पिटैलिटी फेयर एशिया का सबसे बड़ा इंटरनेशनल फूड एंड हॉस्पिटैलिटी फेयर कौन से नेशन ने ऑर्गेनाइज किया है तो इसका करेक्ट आंसर इज इंडिया यू ऑल मस्ट है वर्ल्ड फूड फेयर राइट द वर्ल्ड फूड ट्रेड जो कि फूड प्रोसेसिंग इंडस्ट्री से रिलेटेड हर साल इंडिया में कंडक्ट करवाया जाता है एंड दिस इज एशिया लार्जेस्ट इसी तरह इस साल भी इंडिया ने ही प्रगति मैदान दिल्ली में ऑर्गेनाइज किया है आहार 2022 के नाम से आहार 2022 इट इज बीइंग ऑर्गेनाइज्ड बाय एपेदा दैट इज एग्रीकल्चर एंड प्रोसेसिंग फूड एक्सपोर्ट डेवलपमेंट अथॉरिटी एंड आईटीपीओ आईटीपीओ के हेडक्वार्टर्स आर आल्सो इन प्रगति मैदान दिल्ली सो दीज टू ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया हैज कोलैबोरेटेड to launch ahar 2022 at pragati maidan in new delhi it is a it is asia's biggest international food and hospitality fair it is asia's biggest international food and hospitality fair ahar so these are export promotion of agriculture and food production so epida jo hai ministry of commerce and industry ke andar aata hai आप इसको कंफ्यूज मत कर दीजिएगा दैट इट कम्स अंडर द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर नो इट इज एन एक्सपोर्ट फूड प्रोसेसिंग के एक्सपोर्ट प्रमोशन के लिए एपदा एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है इट कम्स अंडर द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कॉमर्स एंड इंडस्ट्री एंड आईटीपीओ आल्सो इट कम्स अंडर द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कॉमर्स एंड इंडस्ट्री ठीक है तो ये पूरा इवेंट ऑफकोर्स इट इज ऑर्गेनाइज बाय दिस मिनिस्ट्री वी कैन से सो राइट सो एपदा के प्रेजेंट चेयरपर्सन कौन है द प्रेजेंट चेयरपर्सन ऑफ एपदा इज डॉक्टर एम 
Angamutu. Okay, so these are some minor facts, minor facts that you should know about it. <clears throat> Moving on to the next question, we have which state has signed an MOU with SIDB to develop MSME ecosystem in the state under which a project management unit will be established by SIDB. SIDB kya hai? SIDB Small Industrial Development Bank of India is one of the four all India finance institutions that are regulated by the Reserve Bank of India. So what are the other three institutions? Write it down in the comments below. One of them is National Housing Bank. Chiska Government of India has 51% stake. Hai, right? 51% stake is uh, with the Government of India. Uh, other three organizations are NABARD and Exim Bank. Okay. So, SIDB is the fourth one, obviously. SIDB is the fourth one. It is one of the All India Financial Institutions. It is headquartered in Lucknow. It is SIDB ke headquarters are in Lucknow and it promotes microfinance, it promotes medium and small sector enterprises and of course SIDB IDBI se branch out hoke it was born. Okay, let's not go into the details and history of SIDB. These are some important minor facts that you should know about it. So West Bengal ke saath ye MOU sign kiya gaya hai. Aur ye MOU ko implement karne ke liye project management unit establish kiya jayega. Right? The MOU will be established with the help of a project management unit which will help government in facilitating development of MSME ecosystem. It will help the government in facilitating the MSME ecosystem. Okay, so the project management unit, hai, it will study uh, the existing framework. It will guide the stakeholders on how to invest in MSMU, right? Ek ka, ek incubation come financing program hai, bahut bada, to promote more and more MSMEs in the state of West Bengal. Which, which Indian company is providing finances up to 2 lakh pounds to Shivening Scholarship on Artificial Intelligence? If you have been following current affairs, if you have been following the visit of UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson to India, you must have known that India and the UK have signed various MOUs. Okay, so which Indian company is providing finances or of up to 2 lakh pounds to Shivening uh, scholarships on artificial intelligence. Which company? Uh, that company is Adani Group, right? So let's have a let's have a brief look at the list of MOUs. At the list of MOUs signed between India and UK, the questions related MOUs and this is the major list. You can take a screenshot. I make these mind maps. I you know maybe these mind maps help. In better retention. Pictorial representation always helps and mind maps is like you are able to link uh, various things. So this is a subset Adani group will provide 2 lakh pounds to every uh, 2 million pounds to every Indian students each year every Indian student who is pursuing master's degree in the UK. Right, so ye is Shivning Adani scholarship on artificial intelligence ka program which is the 2 lakh pound will be given by Adani group alone. Right, so ye between Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office of British High Commission in New Delhi and the Adani group. So very long name, just remember British High Commission in New Delhi and Adani group ke beech mein ye framework or ya fir MOU sign hua hai. Let's have a look at other MOUs, a short term chair at Birmingham City. Uh, will be uh, will be established right and also an MOU on satellite launch program between New Space India Limited and OneWeb, NSIL and OneWeb. <laughs> NSIL, NSIL you all should know it comes under ISRO, NSIL comes under ISRO, it is a very very important organization. We will discuss at length about it in one of our upcoming sessions. But first, just have a look at this. Or kuch MOUs jo India or UK me sign hua hai. Isse pehle wale session me we uh, also learnt about global global innovation program, right? Nuclear Commonwealth uh, nations me UK aata hai. To 
वट एम आई सेंग एनी वे जो सिविल न्यूक्लियर डील है बिटवीन इंडिया एंड यू के इट विल बी स्ट्रेंथ एंड ग्लोबल इनोवेशन पार्टनरशिप के बारे में विच वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट इन आर प्रीवियस सेशन इट इज अ न्यू डिफेंस कोऑपरेशन पैक्ट इट विल फोकस ऑन ईजी प्रोक्योरमेंट ऑफ वेपन्स इट विल फोकस ऑन ईजी प्रोक्योरमेंट ऑफ वेपन्स इट इज अ नेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ विंड एनर्जी एंड अ ज्वाइंट डेक्लेरेशन ऑफ इंटेंट विथ ओ आर ई कैटापुल्ट ओके सो दीज आर ऑल सम पैक्ट रिलेटेड टू इट दे विल ऑल्सो कोलेबोरेट ऑन द इश्यू ऑफ साइबर सिक्योरिटी ओके एंड वी ऑल नो वी ऑल नो दैट यूरोपियन कमीशन प्रेजिडेंट हैव विजिटेड द राइजाना हिल डायलॉग राइट एंड ऑल्सो ई यू इंडिया ट्रेड एंड टेक्नोलॉजी काउंसिल विल ऑल्सो बी स्टैब्लिश तो ई यू और इंडिया के बीच में जो बायोलैट्रल इन्वेस्टमेंट ट्रेड अग्रीमेंट है that also you should know about it is a free trade agreement between india and EU, eu that is bilateral trade and investment agreement it is important from the exam point of view can be asked <clears throat> how much is india's expenditure on arms in 2021 as per cipri's latest report okay so cipri ke latest report cipri kya hai Cipri is a very important uh, policy research and a think tank institute that is uh, situated in Stockholm, that is in Sweden, right? And on a regular basis, <clears throat> on a regular basis, it releases certain reports regarding trade of arms and manufactured weapons among state global arms trade. Ge uh, baare mein bhi Cipri publishes. and it also it is it sorts of give policy recommendations it gives policy recommendations to various government to ensure peace right it works towards its main aim is to work towards international peace resolution and sustainable peace in international order okay so how much is india's expenditure on in on arms in 2021 kitna india ne kitna expend kiya leave other countries we will learn about it India expended a sum of seventy-seven billion dollars in the year twenty twenty-one. Okay, U.S., China, third was India, right? Then U.K. and then Russia. So the total global military expenditure for twenty twenty-one it has increased to two thousand hundred thirteen billion U.S. dollars. All right. So also. <coughs> Also, the largest arms importer, as per the report uh, published on March fifteenth, two thousand twenty-two, the largest arms importers of the world, uh, according to CIPRI report, was India. Sorry, the two of the largest arms importers of the world were India and Saudi Arabia. India and Saudi Arabia were two of the world's largest arms importers between 2017 and 2021. Okay, so these are the countries. Hai, total, uh, India and Saudi Arabia they also they also contribute to they also contribute to 11 percent of total global arms sale in the world. So these were some minor related facts you should know about it. Next question. Recently, SEBI has reconstituted twenty-one member market data advisory committee by appointing M S Sahu. M S Sahu, very very important personality. Mr. Sahu uh, has been a former chairperson of Indian Bankruptcy Board of India, right? Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board of India ke chairperson reh chuke hain. former professor he was also the former professor of national law university in delhi right he was also the former professor of national law university in delhi mr sahu 21 member market data advisory committee has been constituted by sebi securities exchange board of india earlier it used to have 20 members now it has 21 members of course other members also belong to various important ceos of important companies right like zerodha and other companies you should read about it maybe i but you should first know about market data advisory committee uh, that has been uh, constituted by sebi so basically 
it it its aim is to study segment wise data parameters right data needs and gaps in market research so market research zyada zyada data oriented ho chuki hai data is the new oil even in the financial market right even in research in financial markets data privacy bahut important सेंट्रल इशू है वेन इट कम्स टू फाइनेंशियल ट्रांजेक्शन डेटा प्राइवेसी इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड डेटा एक्सेस रेगुलेशन इन सब एस्पेक्ट को स्टडी करने के लिए मार्केट डेटा एडवाइजरी कमिटी कॉन्स्टिट्यूट करी गई है इट विल ऑल्सो यू नो पुट फॉरवर्ड वेरियस पॉलिसी रिकमेंडेशन बिफोर से बी रिगार्डिंग ऑल द पेरीमीटर्स दैट वी जस्ट डिस्कस्ड राइट बेसिकली कौन कौन से पेरीमीटर्स हैं डेटा गैप्स कहाँ पे हो रहे हैं राइट डेटा प्राइवेसी डेटा प्राइवेसी एंड एक्सेसिबिलिटी से क्या क्या इश्यूज हैं विथ द इंडियन फाइनेंशियल सिस्टम राइट दीज आर ब्रॉडली दीज टू एस्पेक्ट द कमिटी विल स्टडी राइट एंड इट विल ऑल्सो रेकमेंड इट विल ऑल्सो रेकमेंड ऑन स्टैंडर्डाइजेशन स्टैंडर्डाइजेशन ऑफ डेटा डेफिनेशन राइट फॉर एग्जाम्पल कभी भी कोई सर्वे से भी कराता है या इवन आर बी आई भी कभी कोई सर्वे कराता है वॉट बेसिकली हैपन्स सम पेरीमीटर्स डोंट हैव अ कॉमन डेफिनेशन दोज हु हैव स्टडीड स्टैटिस्टिक्स वेल नो वेल वॉट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट थोड़ा सा भी डिफरेंस होता है इन डेफिनेशन ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर टर्म ऑन विच सर्वे इज बिंग कंडक्टेड देर इज अ वाइड गैप इन दी एंड डेटा दैट वी गेट टू एनालाइज सो उस एस्पेक्ट से भी स्टैंडर्डाइजेशन ऑफ ऑल द डेटा डेफिनेशन विल ऑल्सो भी रिकमेंडेड बाई दी मार्केट एडवाइजरी कमिटी राइट एंड ऑल्सो डेटा आइडेंटिफिकेशन लॉजिक यूजिंग कोड लैंग्वेज एंड ऑल दैट स्टफ एंड डेटा वैलिडेशन टेक्निक all these facts basically market data advisory committee as the name suggests deals with all the data related aspect of market research when it comes to indian financial market isse aap samajh jaiye to agar mcq mein aa bhi jata aisa koi option i don't think so it's going to be very very tough to pick up the right option <clears throat> okay so the which organization releases the quarterly industrial outlook survey क्वार्टरली इंडस्ट्रियल आउटलुक सर्वे कौन सा ऑर्गेनाइजेशन रिलीज करता है हर साल नॉट हर साल बट हर क्वार्टर में इट इज अ क्वार्टरली रिपोर्ट इट इज रिलीज बाय द रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया एवरी क्वार्टर राइट फॉर इंडस्ट्रियल परफॉर्मेंस इट फॉर इंडस्ट्रियल परफॉर्मेंस इट रिलीज इंडस्ट्रियल आउटलुक सर्वे राइट एंड फॉर सर्विस टू एनालाइज द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ सर्विस it releases quarterly services and infrastructure outlook survey so these are both quarterly report recently abhi 97th edition was released uh, in april right and for the april and june round it has released 98th round of quarterly report let's have a look at what are its uh, what are its results so basically uh, messers genesis management and market research limited have been authorized to conduct the survey right messers genesis management and market research ek private organization hai jiske sath rbi ne collaborate kiya hai and it will release the quarterly industrial outlook survey for phase uh, april to june 2022 which is which will be the 98th edition right and also rbi will also launch the service and infrastructure uh, outlook survey we have already done this so iska basic aim kya hai basic aim is survey ka kya hai a qualitative assessment on the business climate a qualitative assessment on the business climate right and future mein jo bhi investments related intentions hote hain ya fir expectations hote hain in the upcoming quarter ki kitna investment aayega hamari country ke andar बिजनेस क्लाइमेट कैसा चल रहा है बिजनेस परस्पेक्टिव कैसा चल रहा है इफ यू मस्ट हैव इफ यू हैव रेड इट इन इकोनॉमिक्स एडम स्मिथ थ्योरी ऑफ एनिमल स्पिरिट्स राइट एनिमल स्पिरिट्स व्हाट डज इट इंडिकेट वेदर द इन्वेस्टर्स हैव अ पॉजिटिव आउटलुक टुवर्ड्स एन इकोनॉमी अगर पॉजिटिव आउटलुक होता है तो इन्वेस्टमेंट ज्यादा होते हैं 
right business climate basically deals with that whether the returns on investment will be you know worthy or not so basically industrial outlook survey ye indicate karta hai okay so we will it is very very interesting to even read about it okay so we have the next question when is the world day for lab animals observed वर्ल्ड डे फॉर लैब एनिमल्स कब ऑब्जर्व किया जाता है वर्ल्ड डे फॉर लैब एनिमल्स इज ऑब्जर्व एनुअली ऑन अप्रैल ट्वेंटी फोर्थ लैब एनिमल्स को सब्सटीट्यूट करने के लिए यू नो थ्रू टेक्नोलॉजिकल इंटरवेंशन टू रिड्यूस द एट्रोसिटीज दैट आर बींग इम्पोज रिड्यूस द एट्रोसिटीज ऑन लैब एनिमल्स इन सबकी अवेयरनेस जनरेट करने के लिए वर्ल्ड डे फॉर लैब एनिमल्स इज बींग ऑब्जर्व World Day for Lab Animals is being uh, observed uh, since a very long time. National Anti Vivisection Society is the society in the United Kingdom's. Um, sorry. You have National Anti Vivisection Society, Vivisection Society by the United Kingdom's. okay so this is the organization that will uh, conduct the world day for lab animal world day for lab animal every year on 24th of april aur uska jo adjoining week hota hai that is the world week for lab animals obviously this is from 28th to 26th of april this is one of the national anti vivix section society of the united kingdom this is one of the oldest society that has been working for the protection of lab animals right lab animals kis kis ke liye use kiye jaate hain for pharmaceutical industry for you know various other industries even dermatological products pharmaceutical products and what not largely pharma industry mein lab animals ka use kiya jata hai and unse related violence ko reduce karne ke liye national anti vivis section society has been working and organizing world lab animal day <coughs> last but the very important question for today is meghalaya enterprise architecture meghia जो कि इंडियन एंटरप्राइज आर्किटेक्चर के बेसिस पे इसको फॉर्म किया गया है इट हैज वन दी अवार्ड फॉर चैंपियंस प्रोजेक्ट 2022 गिवन बाय वर्ल्ड यूएन वर्ल्ड समिट ऑन इंफॉर्मेशन सोसाइटी ये प्रोजेक्ट कब लॉन्च हुआ था टू डिजिटाइज सर्विस द क्वेश्चन इज आस्किंग यू द ईयर इन विच द प्रोजेक्ट वॉज लॉन्च बाय मेघालय लेट्स हैव अ लुक एट द करेक्ट आंसर the the project was basically launched in the year 2019 for digitally providing government services for digitally providing government services to citizens businesses and government employees okay so the meghalaya has won in the category that the role of governments and all stakeholders in promotion of icts for development ict promotion for development right so all the projects uh, और कौन कौन सी कंट्रीज को अवार्ड मिला है दैट इज यू ऑस्ट्रेलिया चाइना अर्जेंटीना एंड तंजीनिया सो बेसिकली वर्ल्ड समिट ऑन इंफॉर्मेशन सिस्टम एक यूएन स्पॉन्सर्ड समिट है इट इज अन स्पॉन्सर्ड समिट टू प्रमोट आईसीटी इन गवर्नेंस गवर्नेंस में आईसीटी को प्रमोट करने के लिए ये यूनाइटेड नेशन का एक इनफॉर्मल समिट है so it was first established in the year 2003 so its chief aim is to bridge the digital divide in governance right digital divide jo ki rich country aur poor countries ki governance mein jo aa jata hai usko bridge karne ke liye usko reduce karne ke liye ye platform organize kiya gaya hai right and on that basis only this platform awards various countries awards various states or sub national governments like in this case meghalaya enterprise architecture that aim to that work to bridge the digital divide in governance right so that people are able to access government services digitally ye india enterprise architecture bhi exist karta hai hamare system mein india enterprise architecture uh, jo governance hai usko as holistically as a whole it considers uh, the government services as a whole right 
divided into subunits where each function is dependent on one another. Basically, on a broader level, through digital governance, it aims to inculcate efficiency in the service delivery. Right? So, usi se related Meghia hai, jisko uh, ye award mila hua hai. So, it is a very, very important initiative. It is very important. And 17th May, 17th May uh, by the UN uh, Information Society Forum, 17th May 17th is celebrated as the World Information Society Day by the United Nations, right? It is celebrated as the World Information Society Day by the United Nations. So these are some facts. This was a very, very important and interesting slide. So this was it for today. This was it for today. Thank you so much for watching the video. Take care, study well. And in case you have any doubt, do post it down in the description forum. The, discuss, the discussion forum that is there on our website, you can just log in with your student's account, post your queries on the discussion forum and they will surely be resolved. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next class.